What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and today we're covering more of Samsung by discussing the Samsung Health application. Now Samsung Health combines manual and automatic data and works in collaboration with AI to optimize your mental and physical health, creating the ultimate personalized health companion. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. So to start this demo off, we're going to talk about the customizable tiles. Now, as you can see, I do have a list here and it's pretty short, but you can always add more items by pressing and holding on a card or a tile. And then you'll see that we have the plus icon in the top right hand corner or more so the middle right hand corner. I'll throw an arrow here so you can see what I'm talking about. But if we tap on it, we get a list here of possible tiles or cards we can add and we can scroll through them. So we're going to have things like daily activity, sleep coaching, exercise, medications, cycle tracking, heart rate, blood oxygen, blood glucose, blood pressure, ECG. And you can add single cards at a time or you can do add all at the very top here. But since I have my list configured here, I'm not going to add any more cards. So I'm just going to tap cancel. Now, once you have your cards added, you can rearrange them. So I'm going to scroll down here and you'll see that we have a sleep score tile card. I'm going to press and hold on that and we can swap that with the water intake card. Things like that. Now I'm going to bring it back to how I had it because I have my list optimized. That being said, because my list is optimized, if you're looking for tips on how to organize your list, just for better view and efficiency, I've taken some time to do that here. And you can copy my setup or take this setup and customize it to your liking. Now, once you've done all this, you can see that all these cards still have a line in the top right hand corner of each and every one of them. So I'm just going to tap on the back arrow at the bottom of my display and that's going to save the configuration here. Now there is another thing I want to point out and at the top of this app you can see that we have a synchronization happening. This app is actually synchronizing with the Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra that I'm wearing and that being said these cards do provide information but the information is much more accurate when you have an item like the Galaxy Watch Ultra synchronizing with the application itself. So now we're going to work through all these tiles or cards in the order that I have them because I think once again, I have these best optimized for myself. I try to put the cards that I find most important or view most often at the top and everything else that's less important is going to be towards the bottom. So first we're going to have this tile card on the left hand side and it's going to give us general tips or insights on lifestyle improvements. It's not related to one specific area of your health. So you can see here, this card is going to say, you missed your target bedtime and wake up time each day last week. Try getting to bed on time tonight. So just gives me something to focus on. And then it has kind of a feedback at the bottom. Is this insight useful? You can thumbs up it or thumbs down it. And sometimes you can tap on these cards to learn more information. So again, that card was related to my sleep. So we can look at the sleep data here, but we're going to back out of this only because we're going to have a sleep card in this list. But you can see that as I backed out, you can see that we have that card refresh and it says your stress measurements suggest that last Tuesday was particularly stressful. Deep breathing is one of the best ways to reduce stress. And I'm going to thumbs up the card here because I find it useful. And we could probably click on this card and get more information. So we have a chart here and we can go back to, I think Tuesday, that's Wednesday. We can go to Tuesday there. I don't remember what actually happened on Tuesday, but this is something that if I was paying more attention, I can reference it and try to work on improving. So I'm going to back out of here and you can see once again, that card is going to refresh. So it refreshes quite a bit. You'll see some of the same cards here. They'll give some of the same tips, but it just, kind of reinforces you to be more mindful of what you're doing to optimize your mental and physical health. 
So moving on to the next card, we're going to have our energy score. This is at the top of my list because it is the top card in my opinion. Everything else we're going to show beneath this is used to help create the energy score. So you can see my energy score for today is 87. It's up 10 points. I could tell you that I've been working on my rest today. I haven't really been doing anything crazy. Yesterday I was doing physical activity. I was doing some work. I didn't really work on rest yesterday. So my energy score was lower yesterday. And that makes sense that it's higher today because I kind of cut back on that. I worked more on recovery today. And it's just going to tell us keep up the great work. Again, this kind of makes this feel like it's your personalized health companion, like your personalized health friend. That's how I see it. So in regards to the energy score, we've got feedback underneath. It says your sleep pattern is becoming more regular which positively impacts your overall health and well-being. Maintaining this consistency is crucial for your energy levels. Continue prioritizing good sleep hygiene to keep your bed wake time consistency great. Excellent. Great job on your efforts. And once again, we can tap on this card to get more detailed information about what's going on here. So you can see at the top, we're going to have a simple graph here. Then underneath, we're going to have our energy score, which is excellent, by the way. Then we have our energy score factors. And I like paying attention to this stuff because it allows you to see what you need to focus on. So again, energy score factors. We've got sleep time average, sleep time consistency, bed wake time consistency, sleep time, previous day activity, sleep in HR, sleep in HRV, a lot of information here. And overall, this looks generally good, so I don't really have to worry too much. Now, the items that are blue, they're excellent, and the items that are gray, they are just going to be good. And I believe if there was like a deficiency, I believe it's orange. So nothing here to really be worried about. And if we scroll down, we're going to get a heart rate during sleep graph, heart rate variability during sleep graph, skin temperature during sleep graph. So this is all rich in information. It gives you very detailed information about what's going on when you sleep. And again, this reinforces the idea of the personalized health companion. And when I think about the future, I think we're going to see more things like this. And personally, I'd be willing to pay money to get more insight into my personal health. But it looks like that's it for this page. So we can back out of here by tapping on the back arrow in the top left hand corner. Now, if we take a look at the next card, you'll see that I have sleep score here. And again, this follows the idea that the important cards are placed at the top. And sleep score has a huge impact on our energy score. Now that sleep score tile card is going to have some basic information. It's going to have our sleep score of 81, which is good. It's going to have here about what time I went to bed and about how long I was in bed and about how long I actually slept. So if we tap on this tile or card, it's going to refresh the page. And at the top, we're going to have a basic bar chart. It's going to show all the days here. It looks like it's about 10 days or so, maybe a little bit more. And for each day, how long I slept. Then we're going to have some tile cards underneath. And first, we're going to have our sleep time. So we're going to have 11 hours and four minutes for today. Now, I don't think that's actual sleep. I think that's basically how long I was resting. And then underneath this, we're going to have when we went to sleep and when we woke up. And if you did this several times, you're going to have more times added. So you can see here that 11 in the morning, I went to sleep again and I woke up at 1.14. And then we have our actual sleep time. So again, this goes back to the 11 hours and four minutes. That's more how long we were in bed and actual sleep time is about how long we actually were sleeping. And I find myself that through doing this so long, I need about eight to 10 hours of sleep just because I do a lot of physical activity. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of brain work. And if I don't get that 10 hours, I feel absolutely drained. My stress increases, my anxiety increases. So this has allowed me to figure out how much sleep I actually need. And I always try to shoot for 10, but sometimes it's not perfect. 
So moving down, we're going to have once again our sleep score, which is good. Now we're going to have some items of consideration here, but that doesn't mean that they're bad. So here we're going to have sleep score factors and you can see that my sleep time is red and it says nine hours and 41 minutes. Now I believe the application states that adults should look for maybe around seven to eight hours of sleep. I'm not sure of the exact time there. It's somewhere in the application. And if you go over that, it does mark your sleep time as red or excessive, but I don't think this should be red. I think it should consider more of your daily lifestyle and how much sleep you're actually going to need because myself once again i tend to need about 10 hours of sleep and that's when i feel best if i get anything less than that i'm i'm just not going to be my in my optimized condition here so then we're going to have physical recovery 97 percent restfulness 92 percent mental recovery 95 percent again this all makes sense because i got about 10 hours of sleep almost anything shorter than this these all tend to be lower and then we have sleep cycles seven times now that is an area that i can work on and I could say this is very exciting because I know that this happened last night. I drank too much water. I was trying to be hydrated. And that meant that I had to go to the bathroom quite a bit at night. And I got up and that's how we got those seven times. So this has happened to me before. I could look at this. I could try to drink less water before bedtime. And then ideally, based on what I have seen, I should have less sleep cycles. So scrolling down, we're going to have sleep stages. And again, this should be affected by our sleep cycles. So if you have a lot of sleep cycles, your sleep stages might not be all that great. So this is what we have. I'm just going to show this. I'm not going to really talk much about it because it's going to make the video longer than it needs to. But we've got some very detailed information here. We also have blood oxygen during sleep and we have snoring if there was any snoring, but I don't have any data here. And then moving down, we have skin temperature during sleep. So this application places a lot of emphasis on sleep. I think that's really cool because it's one of those things when you're sleeping, you're not, you can't be aware of it. So you need something to measure it. And then underneath this, we're going to have heart rate during our sleep. We're going to have respiratory rate. And then we're going to have sleep consistency. And by the way, this might be all a little bit more detailed because I am participating in sleep coaching. Even when I finish sleep coaching, I normally repeat it just to see what I can do better, see if my sleep animal changes, anything like that. And yes, you do get a sleep animal when you do start sleep coaching. Mine is a penguin here. It's just uh, interesting. So we're going to scroll to the top here and we can back out by tapping on the arrow in the top left hand corner. So next we're going to have our water intake card and that's going to be this card right here. Now it is manual, which means that you manually have to add your water and you can add it in different increments. Now I believe the default might have been 12. I'm not entirely sure, but I changed mine to the four fluid ounces you see here. So if we want to add water, we just need to tap on this. Now, obviously I didn't drink water just now, so I'm going to tap on the tile or card here and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to press and hold on that time that I added the water and then I can delete that. So we can back out here and again, we can tap on the tile card and just get more information here about the amount of water that we drank and about what time that we drink them. Now this is going to depend on how accurate you were at putting this all in. I don't tend to fret about what times I drink water. For example, if I'm grabbing a 32 ounce bottle of water, I'll just add 32 ounces, even though I'm not going to drink all 32 ounces right away. I just like to get the water in there so I'm aware of how much water I've been drinking. So I'm going to back out of here once again by tapping on the arrow in the top left hand corner. Next, we're going to have the tile card workouts this week. And you can see that it's zero because it's Sunday. So the week has just started and I don't tend to work out on Sundays. So if we tap on this tile or card, we're probably not going to have too much information, obviously for today, but you can see that prior days, we did some walking, we did some running, walking, running. I didn't do any weight training, which I'm trying to get back into. 
and ideally that will show here but this is very good information for keeping track of exercise so we're going to back out of here by tapping on the arrow in the top left hand corner once again next we're going to have a tile or card that can't be removed i think this should be removable in my opinion and that's going to be our steps tile card again my exercise for today on sunday is very minimal so my steps are not going to be very high here but we can tap on this and get more information and we'll have a chart at the top we'll have the steps for today about how many miles that was about how many calories how many floors what i really like here is steps by time of day i think that's really nice it just kind of gives you an idea of when you actually did your walk in the most and i also like under here compare my steps so this will compare your steps with other people who are using samsung health and i'm above the average which is really cool i'm in the top 15 percent and it's just really cool information so i'm going to back out of here once again by tapping the arrow on the top left hand corner and next we're going to have our diet or food intake card now sunday again i don't really place a lot of emphasis on keeping track of things it's more of my free day to do whatever i want so i'm not going to have too many things added here so it has 660 calories out of 3000 i know that i've had more than that but again on sunday i try to relax and not count calories but if we want to see more of what i actually had today we could tap on the tile card and we're going to have a chart here at the top a bar chart and it looks like it's going to show our amount of calories per day and then we're going to have a tile card underneath that shows all the different meals we had again i skipped some added information here because i'm not too worried but i did add some information just because i wanted to have something to show for the video so you can see for breakfast i had pancakes with butter and syrup boosted 100 percent juice smoothie green machine from naked juice now what's really cool is underneath this and before we get into it again i have to emphasize you have to manually add your food but if you manually add your food the samsung health application has the nutrients of each food item already so that's more automatic so you just have to be very good about adding the food and then you get this nice breakdown of nutrient intake summary and it's broken down by carbs fat and protein and then we have nutrition info which includes a lot of different items here so we've got protein fiber vitamin a vitamin c potassium calcium iron saturated fat sodium sugar and this here is another big part of what creates this feeling of a personalized health companion or friend and if we tap on the nutrition info here we're going to get some information about what all the different colors mean for each nutrient so again everything looks pretty neutral here because i didn't add a whole lot of items so we're not really uh high intake and we're really not average we're just kind of low intake at this point right now because i didn't add more items but if we open this once again if you have a low intake it's a light green if it's an average intake it's a darker green and that's recommended and if it's high intake it's orange which means you should try to consider this more now i will say that it looks like once again all this is based on a 3000 calorie diet so if you do need more calories or less calories this might be off a little bit so just something to keep in mind and then lastly if you wanted to enter a meal you have this enter meal option you could tap on it you could tap the time of day that you are eating so right now it would be more like an afternoon snack and then you can look for food now what's really cool is if you have added items already you can just tap on recently added and this works really well if you tend to eat some of the same foods every day and you can go through and select some of these so for example i do try to eat rice every day because it's pretty simple and you can just tap on that and then you would just 
tap on next and then change the servant size, that kind of thing. Uh, and then that would be added to this nutrient intake summary. But again, we're not going to add anything that I didn't actually eat so we can discard. And then we'll back out of this by tapping on the arrow once again in the top left hand corner. And then we're going to have a tile card that's very near and dear to me. This is the stress card. And uh, you can see that it's elevated right now, but that doesn't mean that it's elevated at this very moment. But it is like a very simple card that kind of like shows you like, hey, you know, your stress was a little bit elevated. And sometimes creating these videos, it is a little bit stressful. So it could be actually related to now. But if I want to get more information, I could tap on the tile or the card. So here we are. And this was about an hour ago. And I could say that starting this video was a little bit stressful because it didn't start all that smoothly. And it may look like the video is smooth because of the editing. But sometimes these videos are kind of rough to do. And we have stress throughout the day. And I think, again, I didn't get the amount of sleep I needed when I first woke up. And this affects my stress, my anxiety. So you can see that we kind of peaked around 1 o'clock here. And that's when I said, you know, I know I didn't sleep enough. I need to get more sleep. And then after I did that, uh, it looks like I woke up and my stress was pretty low. And then I knew I was going to work on the video and my stress went up because I had a hard time initially making this video. But what's cool is underneath this, we're going to have these breakdowns about what time uh, stress has changed when it was low, when it was high. And we can tap on view all and we get this detailed log about stress throughout the day, which is very helpful. And it kind of reinforces you to reflect on the day and what happened when you had low stress and when you had high stress. And as someone who deals with anxiety, this is very helpful to me. It helps me keep my mental health in check and it helps me focus on things I can do to improve my stress or my anxiety. And then we're just going to have this very helpful card underneath breathe. Now this breathe in tile card, it just lets you know that deep breathing can be a great way to lower stress. I can tell you from experience that this does work very well. There's actually a breathe in feature on the Galaxy Watch series and it just, helps you breathe and after I do a session and again you could change how long the session is you do feel a lot better but that's about it for this page there's nothing else underneath here so we can back out of this by once again tapping on the arrow in the top left hand corner and then if we scroll down here we're going to have body composition so this is going to work best if you have again a Samsung Galaxy watch and if you have a scale that you pair with the Samsung Health app as I do. And this is going to give you basic information on this tile card, such as your weight, your muscle mass, and your fat percentage. And if we tap on that tile card, it's going to refresh the page. And we're just going to get more information on body composition. So you can see here we're going to have a simple graph at the top. We're going to have those numbers once again, weight muscle mass and body fat percentage then we're going to have more information on body composition so again weight skeletal muscle fat body water those kind of things and then scrolling down here we're going to have our body analysis so again we're going to have body fat and we're going to have bmi and then we're going to have our basal metabolic rate and this is just the amount of calories you need if you're just at rest basically it's how many calories you're burning if you're at rest so this kind of gives you an idea of the minimum amount you need now again i try to strive for 3,000 calories a day i would like to do more but it depends on what i'm doing throughout the day and then underneath this we're going to have this tile card we can check our body composition with our Galaxy Watch Ultra. But I am pretty sure you could do this on previous watch generations. I'm pretty sure I did this on the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic and the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. And then underneath this, we can set our targets for our weight, body fat, and skeletal muscle to get tips 
for reaching our goals. And I think I actually have to go into this and set this because I would like to add more calories. I would like to balk up a little bit. So we're going to back out of this by once again tapping on that card in the top left hand corner. And then we're going to have our last item here. And this is more experimental. It's Aegis Index. And this is a part of Labs. So it has a very simple bar chart here, similar to what you see with stress, and we could tap on this. So you're going to use your watch to measure advanced glycation end products or ages. And it says here, ages are compounds that develop naturally in your body when protein and fat molecules are oxidized by sugar molecules. Ages accumulates as you get older. Now again, I don't know too much about this and the information here does seem limited and it makes sense because this is in its experimental phase. But once again, we have this graph at the top and above it in the top right hand corner, we have this bar chart icon, which if I tap on, we're going to get the graph expanded but we could look at our data in increments of seven days, 31 days, or 12 months. Now, because I haven't been measuring that much or that long yet, we're going to look at 31 days. And you can see that my ages index has decreased. Now, I will say I've been more mindful of what I've been eating. I've been trying to eat more healthy. I do sometimes splurge. I will have candy sometimes. I recently had fried chicken. Uh, but I do tend to eat really good, except again, I had a lot of popcorn at the movie theater on Friday as well. So I have my bad days, but I do try to eat more vegetables, more fruits, fruit smoothies, things like that. Uh, chicken that's not fried, chicken that's grilled, maybe it might be breaded is, the, is like the worst. And I try to avoid any beef or anything that might be high in fat. And again, you can see that this has gone down a little bit. And I want to see if I can get this lower and maybe I can learn more about ages index and improve this. And that is pretty much it for this content. Now, again, my setup here is very simplified. I don't have a whole lot of cards added. In fact, I removed a whole lot of cards, but I'm very excited about this because this feels like my personalized health companion or friend. And it just kind of helps me keep my mental and physical health in check. But what do you think about this? Are you actually using this feature? Let us know in the comments down below. So that is it for today's content. As always, thanks for watching and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon, check in out.